Battle Shonen. They're called Battle Shonen for a reason, let's be real. We sit down and watch shows like Bleach and One Piece and Naruto for the narrative plot devices and, you know, the very scantily drawn women, but also, more than anything, the fight. And while I watch anime for the lore more than anything, it doesn't mean I can't sit back, relax, and enjoy an incredible fight when I see one. And if we're being entirely real with ourselves, there's no way to argue that Naruto does not have the best fights in the entirety of the big three. Though a couple of the fights in Thousand Year Blood War arc have been very good. But you know it's not One Piece. But the problem with the show Back to the Gills with incredible fights is one can't help but wonder, what are the best fights? What are the fights that every couple of months you go onto YouTube and rewatch them all over again? What are the fights that meant so much to the plot of the story that if they were removed, the entire story would be different? What are the fights that we simply couldn't have lived without? What are the fights that made Naruto? Well, today, I hope to answer that question. But the thing is, it's not just me today. No, because when you're talking something as important as the greatest fights in Naruto history, well, then you gotta bring somebody else in to fact check you, of course. So fact checking me today is none other than the legendary Naruto Explained. See, me and Naruto Explained have been in the lab, bouncing ideas off each other, trying to figure out what are the most important, influential, and rewatchable fights in all of Naruto? And while we could just sit here and tell you which fights we love the most in a list and make this video two and a half minutes, well, we both have a flair for the dramatic. So today, on top of telling you our favorite fights, we're also going to be explaining why these fights meant so much to the Naruto timeline. Why, without these fights, Naruto wouldn't have been close to as popular as it is now. And more importantly than anything, why some of these fights are better than others. Hi, this is Nick from the future. He just finished filming this video and he realized that he's saying Naruto's fights. And that's gonna make you think that it's just fights within the show of Naruto, but I'm talking Naruto's fights. Fights that Naruto is included in. Okay, back to past self. Have fun filming the rest of the video, past self. But before me or Naruto explained to get to break down any of these fights, guys, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And since we're talking about other YouTube pages, you guys should go ahead and follow my other YouTube page, The Weeb Commander, where instead of talking about Naruto, I talk about any other anime. You should also go follow my brand new anime podcast, Utaku's Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week, including things that could happen in Naruto. And more than anything, guys, make sure you follow Naruto Explained as well, because, well, I'll let him tell you what video I'm appearing in on his page here, very soon. First and foremost, I really got to thank NC Hammer for having me over here on his channel. Really appreciate that, brother. While we're only talking about Naruto's best fights, over on my channel, NC Hammer and myself are going to be going over Sasuke's best fights. And based off the chat that we've had privately, I know we got a banger list that you guys are going to be enjoying. So the way that we're doing today's video is a top five. Chatting the top five most influential, rewatchable, and important battles throughout Naruto's timeline. However, today's video will not be including fights from movies or Boruto. I know, I know, both Toneri and Momoshiki and Ishiki, fantastic fights. I'm gonna be handling fights five, three, and one, and Naruto Explained is gonna be handling fights two and four. So now that we got the rules out of the way, let's get cracking into this list. Coming in at number five, we have a fight that I wouldn't even blame you if you put it at number one, because somehow at the bottom of this list, we have Naruto versus Gara, And the fact that Naruto versus Gara is at the bottom of this list should show you just how many incredibly important and gorgeous and rewatchable fights there is in Naruto. Naruto's fight against Gara is the accumulation of everything that happened during the Konoha Crush arc. Slowly but surely, the narrative had been building towards Gara being revealed as the big bad. It was an untouchable force in the Forest of Death, shattering the long-standing record set by Itachi for completion time, which he probably would have beat even faster if he hadn't been slowed down by a team from the Hidden Rain that he kills mercilessly. And then there's his battle against Rock Lee, where Rock Lee opens to the fourth or the fifth gate and speeds up to supersonic speeds to overcome the power of Gaara's ultimate defense, Sand. However, Gaara's power is too much for Rock Lee, and Rock Lee gets caught in Gaara's sand, where Gaara is able to use his sand burial to shatter Rock Lee's arm and leg, to the point where Rock Lee has to undergo life-threatening surgery to possibly be able to ever fight again. And then there's Gaara's battle against Sasuke in the final rounds of the Chunin exam, where Sasuke uses the Chidori for the first time to strike into Gara's sand and manages to cut him. We're then served to one of the most iconic voice acting experiences of all time with Gara yelling, It's blood! My blood! I couldn't do its service if I tried. And finally, Gara starts off the Konoha crush but 
accidentally, using a partial manifestation of Shukaku to start wreaking havoc. And Sasuke continues his battle against Gara as it spills into the woods next to Konoha, where both Sasuke and Sakura are defeated. It isn't until Naruto arrives on the scene that we truly get the most important part of this fight. See, as Sasuke is slowly but surely being strangled against a tree by part of Shukaku, Naruto enters into combat against an already partially transformed Gara pushing Gara in this partial transformation to his limits, as Naruto used everything in his arsenal thus far to battle against Gara. And this was pre-Rasengan. Naruto was simply battling against Gara with multi-shadow clones and a couple of kunai. However, the fight reaches its true peak in intensity when Gara undergoes our first ever full transformation. You see, prior to this moment, we had never seen a Jinchuriki undergo a full transformation. We were given our first ever taste of the overwhelming power that a Jinchuriki can wield, but Gara wasn't wielding this power. This power was being wielded through Gara as a conduit, but in reality, it was Shukaku raging right next to Konoha. And thus Naruto, when pushed into a corner, is able to use his Toad Summon to summon Gamabunta. And it's at this point that we see basically our first ever mech battle in Naruto, as this giant toad in Gamabunta with a pipe and a blade starts to cut off parts of Shukaku. Oh, by the way, earlier I lied. It wasn't Sasuke getting pushed against the tree with the sand, it was Sakura. Doesn't really matter in this fight, neither of them really did anything anyways. But as these two giants battled in the forest, you could see that the trees were only to their ankle level. Both Naruto and Gara, a barely visible speck sitting on the respective foreheads of the mechs they were controlling. And as Gamabunta launches a final attack against Shukaku, he tells Naruto to use transformation jutsu on both of them. Gamabunta simply asking that whatever he turns them into has claws and fangs. And thus, as we see Naruto begin to get covered in his orange chakra, he uses transformation jutsu and turns Gamabunta into Kurama, giving us our first real glimpse of Kurama in battle. And after Gamabuta is able to get his hands on Shukaku, Naruto headbutts Gara out of his coma and breaks the full possession of Shukaku. Outside of just being one of the most iconic fights in Naruto, this fight narratively is arguably one of the most important in Naruto's whole history. Well, we had seen Naruto use Takno Jutsu on the likes of Zabuza and Haku already, Gara is genuinely the first person Naruto was ever able to save. Naruto saw himself when he was battling against Gara. He saw a boy who had a demon also sealed inside of him at a young age. A boy who had to grow up alone because everybody in his village was afraid of him. A boy who, unlike Naruto, hadn't been lucky enough to have been surrounded by friends who actually accepted him. In Gara, Naruto saw what he could have been, and thus Naruto reached out a hand to Gara after their battle and decided to become Gara's first friend, because Naruto understood that Gara got this way because of the lack of friends that he had. Gara wouldn't have gone on to help Rock Lee in the battle against Kimimaru, which means Rock Lee would have died. Gara wouldn't have gone on to become the Kazekage because he would have continued down the path of trying to become the ultimate weapon. Gara wouldn't have been elected as one of the leaders of the fourth great Shinobi World War and given his iconic speech to 80,000 Shinobi. This fight opened the door to us fully understanding what Naruto was about, as Gara was the first person in Naruto's entire history to truly break out of the fate that was set out for him when he was born. As Gara was born to be the ultimate weapon, but in this moment, he broke out of that mold and became just the regular guy he wanted to be. Gara broke out of isolation and found friends and became a leader. Gara, though his journey started substantially later than Naruto, finished it much earlier than him, as he went to replace his father, Rasa, who had been killed prior to the Konoha Crush arc by Orochimaru as the youngest ever Kaze Kage. Gara would then go on in the early episodes of Naruto Shippuden to protect the entire Hidden Sand Village against a bomb dropped by Daedara. So uh, yes, this battle was incredible because the fight was really cool. We got to see Shukaku and Kurama for really the first time. And Naruto unironically uses Thousand Years of Death against a partially transformed Shukaku State Gara. But the reason that this fight resides in the top five is one, because it allowed Sasuke to realize that Naruto was catching up with him in power. And two, because it brought Gara into the fold. Since we're talking about Sasuke realizing that the gap between his and Naruto's power was very slowly but surely closing, our fight at number four could not be more perfectly placed. But I'll let Naruto explain, do what he does best, 
and explain that one for you. Okay, so coming in at number four, we got Naruto versus Sasuke in part one. And this fight isn't just one of the best Naruto Uzumaki fights, but for me, it's one of the best fights in the entire series because it perfectly shows you how in a battle shonen, the battle itself can be used to develop characters, especially when you start mixing in all the chilling emotion that the manga gives to us at the end of Naruto volume 24, where Naruto, after briefly losing himself in that fight against Kimimaru, is shown screaming at Sasuke and the two of them are standing on the statues of Hashirama and Madara. And the very last panel you see in that volume is Sasuke's face literally shaded out with his eyes not being shown. It was a clear sign that over the next two volumes, we weren't just going to see Naruto give his all to prevent his friend from going to Orochimaru who wanted to acquire Sasuke's body, but it was also Naruto trying to save the soul of his friend. And that one panel by Kishimoto showed us just how much of a conflicted soul that Sasuke truly was. The Sasuke who Naruto had bonded with, like a brother, had changed following the fight with Gar. That skirmish on the rooftop where he saw a further proof of that huge gap between himself and Naruto and the sound for making Sasuke realize his own weakness. And in hindsight, we as the audience know that in the back of Sasuke's mind, he was thinking about Itachi's instructions to kill his best friend to acquire the Mangekyo Sharingan. Between this and Naruto's own memories of his time with Sasuke and Sakura begging Naruto to bring Sasuke back, it makes that moment where Naruto starts wailing on Sasuke really hit home because it's our first sign of what Sasuke would later go on to say, that when two high-level shinobi exchange blows, they can communicate with each other. Naruto was punching Sasuke like crazy, but Sasuke's lifeless eyes looking back at Naruto was a sign that Naruto's words, they weren't reaching Sasuke's soul. And that's what we're really going to see throughout the narrative of the fight itself. The resulting battle where we see Sasuke's curse mark give him power to send Naruto flying across the battlefield ultimately leads us to the flashbacks where Sasuke goes from looking down at one brother who's sinking beneath the water to thinking back to the older brother from five years ago in the past. The use of a flashback at this part of the manga sets the stage to allow us as readers to fully understand Sasuke's motives and why he hates his brother so much, why Sasuke is the way that he is, and it also continues to build on that enigma of Itachi Uchiha as we see Itachi growing more distant towards Sasuke in the manga in the flashback and ultimately we see the Uchiha massacre that forever changed Sasuke's life. The way that Kishimoto ends a flashback by having Sasuke sink down into the water while Naruto's also emerging from the water is one of my favorite transitions because it shows that the fight has moved into another gear with Sasuke now using his Sharingan while his heart is tormented and is filled with hatred. We see some really cool exchanges like Sasuke literally pulling one of the most gangster moves ever where he goes up to Naruto and he starts snatching weapons out of Naruto's bag and you get that first Shidori versus Rasengan clash on top of the water but the moment that Sasuke starts to increase his curse mark by spreading across his face you get this tormented expression in Naruto's eyes in the manga when he realizes that his best friend is actually trying to kill him. This is so heartbreaking. Naruto did everything he could to try and save Sasuke from Gar, and he's trying to save him from Orochimaru but it's this moment here where you can begin to start seeing Naruto begin to break and it's while he's mentally nerfed that Sasuke starts to run the curse mark amp Shidori right through his chest but whereas Naruto had been previously nerfed the Nine Tails influence kicks in just before Sasuke delivers what should have been a killing blow. At this point we see the gloves come off completely in the manga. Sasuke sees Kurama's chakra and Naruto just goes into beast mode at one point. You get this super cool scene where he's screaming so loud that Sasuke's fire release is just erased by the shout. It leads to Kishimoto again using the narrative as a way to add weight to the battle so their characters can be developed. Because after Sasuke tells Naruto that someone who has never known bonds can't understand his pain, we see Sasuke's Sharingan evolve and the battle hits into another gear with Sasuke using the Sharingan Eye of Insight to predict Naruto's moves and counter the moves that he's seeing. And then we see Naruto up the ante even more by using Kurama's Chakra going into that one tail form and what little little advantage that Sasuke had is completely gone at this point. Naruto is just tanking his fire release in the manga and you get this beautiful shot where you see the fire release spreading across Naruto's body. There's a circular appearance for it and you see Naruto just staring back through the fire looking at Sasuke like is this all you've got? 
I love that one panel right there. That's one of my favorite panels in the entire series. So essentially, after this, we see Naruto start using his chakra arms. He's trying to snatch Sasuke. We're seeing the further that Naruto goes into his desperation, the wackier the battle's getting because it reflects both Shinobi digging deeper into their souls as we move closer to the climax with Sasuke in his full curse mark state. And you have Naruto with that one tail and they're going into that iconic Shidori versus Rasengan clash that is so huge that Kakashi you can see what's going on from the distance but the beauty of this fight comes in the way that it ends and that's actually why i really feel like it's a top 10 naruto fight for the entire franchise naruto doesn't just go for a killing blow he focuses on scratching sasuke's headband to prove sasuke wrong that he couldn't do so sasuke when he jabs at naruto the fingers go from being extended to being curled in to avoid an assassination jab showing that both of these kids when they're in the deepest parts of their soul they've now begun to walk different paths one is seeking to be acknowledged and the other is making a conscious decision to seek power in a way that didn't require him killing his best friend. The raw emotion from the fight and the implications it would have for the entire series makes it one of the best fights in the franchise. That fight to this day still makes me angry. Naruto very easily could have just summoned Gamabunta again. It's not like he wasn't already using his early version one Jin cloak. Oh, but Nick Sasuke had to get away for the plot to move forward. Yeah, like I'm not gonna deny that you're right. You absolutely are. It's just aggravating. Also, so imagine Sasuke's like, oh, I got this new curse mark, I'm gonna leave the village, and then he just gets stomped by a toad. That would have been hilarious. But since we're talking about the fights in the early days of Naruto, I want to take us all the way back to arguably the first big important battle in all of Naruto. That's right, because coming in at number three, we have Team Seven in the Land of Waves against Zabuza in Haku. I would happily put this fight at number one, but I know if I did, people would yell at me. This fight is absolutely iconic. It was the pace setter for the rest of Naruto. I would argue if this fight wasn't as good as it was, the rest of Naruto may have never gotten made. This fight showed us what Naruto as a franchise was capable of, with a menacing, cool, and intimidating antagonist in Zabuza with a devastating backstory. Even with nostalgia removed, this fight is perfect to me. The fight opening with Zabuza hurling the Executioner Sword at all of Team 7, the Executioner Sword, the first Buster Sword we We've seen in Naruto, the introduction of the hidden mists in the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, the first time we see Kakashi use his Sharingan, Zabuza using the hidden mist jutsu and appearing behind Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, Naruto having a panic attack but remembering the time he stabbed himself in the hand to calm himself down and swearing that he would never be scared again, and more important than arguably anything else, Kakashi watching Zabuza do the hand signs for water dragon jutsu and just copying them for the first time ever, for the first time giving us true perspective into Kakashi's real power, literally being able to outwater ninjutsu Zabuza, one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. And that's only the first time they fight. The second time they fight, Haku gets entered into the mix and he uses his ice mirror to fill Sasuke with Senbon while Sasuke is protecting Naruto. And don't even get me started on Haku's death because what we don't realize until later on that Haku's death is exactly the same as Rin's death and what Kakashi must have gone through after once again accidentally killing killing a child who stepped in front of his Chidori trying to protect Zabuza. Zabuza coming to the realization that Haku loved him and having to deal with the loss of Haku. And then Zabuza, well, filled with weapons, going on a 1v100 against all of the thugs in the Land of Waves and dying next to Haku. I mean, I, I still cry every time I watch it. While this fight narratively probably didn't mean as much as some of the other fights on this list, is really all that we got from it was that Sasuke does actually respect Naruto a little bit. Obviously, the iconic scene of Naruto acting as the Demon Wind Shuriken and appearing behind Zabuza, which would get used several times throughout the duration of Naruto as a plan between Naruto and Sasuke. And the true understanding that Kakashi is an unrequited badass, the real reason that this entry is this high on the list, is because, like I stated earlier, without this battle, we may have not even seen the end of Naruto. And I mean from both a manga and an anime perspective. The incredibly touching story of Zabuza, an outcast from the Hidden Mist who fled because he didn't agree with the politics of the nation, taking in an orphan boy whose clan had been destroyed because of their Keke Genkai, and traveling the world as bounty hunters slash bandits, dying side by side next to each other after realizing that they were all each other had in the world, set the pace for Naruto not only having some of the most interesting to watch fights, but also interesting to learn about fights. As within this battle, we learned about the discrimination that Keke Genkai users receive all across the world. We learned about the Blood Mist Village and its cruel practices, and how 
Zabaza, who was once hailed as the Demon of the Mist after killing his entire graduating class, wanted to leave that system. It's also, I believe, the first time that we see Naruto's orange chakra start to leak out after Haku fills both him and Sasuke with Senbon. It was the first real peek behind the curtain that we got into Naruto's possible power. And of all of the fights in Naruto, it has my favorite ending. Maybe it is nostalgia because I watched this fight on Adult Swim at 10 p.m. as a eight or nine year old. But even if it is nostalgia, this fight is incredible. Speaking of fights where the bad guy dies at the end, coming up next at number two, Naruto Explains got a big one for you. So here's the thing, you cannot have a top five Naruto fights without having Naruto versus Pain on the list. I don't care who you are, it's mandatory. Between Naruto's entrance with all those toads and you got the Sage Cloak just flapping like he's a DC comic superhero, or the way you had that super cool line where Naruto's boldly declaring that he's gonna take out all the pains with this Rasen Shuriken, this fight it's just special however for me it's special because of the emotional weight and i'm gonna get really personal with you guys here this art when it was coming out it was one of those moments where you remember exactly where you were when you first read the chapters or you first experienced in the anime by this point pain was already super high on my list of characters who i hate it purely because he ripped my heart out by first killing jiraiya but in his invasion before fighting naruto he had moments where i was emotionally broken more than once just Zune getting her soul ripped out absolutely broke me because she was one of my favorite characters. Kakashi dying absolutely broke me to a point where when I finished the chapter, I set my phone down and I put my head on the table at work because I literally was crying seeing Kakashi, my favorite character at the time, give his life for Choji. And then the way that Tsunade just breaks the column in anger when she sees Kakashi is dead. So by the time that Naruto pulls up in Sage mode and has all those toes fighting, where the hidden leaf fields used to be before pain blew it up to say i wanted pain to well feel pain that's an absolute understatement however here's the thing about that fight it's not just we readers who are emotionally on edge as the fight's going on it's also naruto throughout the fight you start seeing the cracks in naruto uzumaki as a man that are leading to him being torn down to a point where he eventually almost breaks karama's seal it starts out with the quiet confident rage where you see naruto with that intensity in his eyes he's just bodying the anime Animal Path summons in a way that Ninja Pita definitely does not approve of, especially when he throws that Rhino 90,000 feet into the air. He just yeets that thing while the Kaiju battles between the Rinnegan summonings and Naruto's Toad summons are beginning to heat up. You got Naruto channeling all that rage into his first Rasen Shuriken where he says he's going to be ending the fight in one shot and it's the first time in a battle setting where we see him use this Jutsu and he's not just slamming it into somebody like a regular Rasengan. And to Naruto Naruto's credit, if Nagato had not been quick thinking, it would have done exactly what Naruto claimed. The attack just expands right before it detonates, and that range would have wiped out all the pains. Another thing this fight does is that it truly captures the heart of what makes Naruto fight so special and stand out so much in comparison to other shonen. The strategy element and the hidden move hidden behind the hidden move. You got Naruto using the chaos of the battle to isolate one of the pains by having one of the toes use a sandstorm to block the vision of the pain while Naruto is literally inside of Gamabunta driving a double-fisted Rasengan into the animal path. You got Naruto lulling Pain into a false sense of security because while Pain thinks that Naruto's sage mode has run out unbeknownst to Pain, the scroll on Naruto's back actually allows one of the toes to reverse summon one of Naruto's clones that's been gathering sage chakra form, which allows Naruto to pop back into sage mode instantly. And he just shatters one of Pain's chakra rods and he immediately starts retaking advantage of the fight. We see Naruto Naruto's quick thinking yet again when he adjusts to seeing the Praetor Path absorb Jutsu with the Rasen Shuriken being absorbed. Naruto makes Pain think that he's just going to make the same move all over again, but under the guise of a smoke bomb, Naruto launches a really brilliant multi-step attack, which is actually a callback to the Land of Waves itself. One of the clones transforms into the Rasen Shuriken, and the other Naruto is launching an attack from in the air with a double Rasengan, and after this is done, Naruto makes a move to try and eliminate all the pains however the deva path obviously uses the almighty push and gets them away even when all of this fails for naruto we see naruto's wheels that continue to turn and the best case example of this is how when the praetor path is absorbing his sage chakra naruto sends him so much sage chakra that the dude just turns into a frog however for as clear-headed as naruto was here the iconic cycle of hatred speech is where things rapidly begin to start tearing down for naruto it's a brilliant deconstruction 
of Naruto's character in this one moment in order to get us to that iconic scene where Naruto loses control. So while Naruto is pinned down and he gets this anger about losing his village and his sensei and his friends all being destroyed, Pain basically just tells him in short, hey, join the club. This is one of the few times in the series where we see the ultra loud mouth Naruto at an utter loss for words. And after Hinata bravely tries to rescue him, we see Naruto essentially hit his breaking point. Prior to this, we'd only seen the terror that came from Naruto being in the four tail state. But this time, Naruto just goes straight into the six tails right from the jump. And it warns us as readers that this time it isn't Naruto just snapping and losing control. Naruto is in danger of being too far gone to the point where Naruto might not be able to be saved. And the way that Masashi Kishimoto uses Yamato's narration in an expert fashion to form a ticking clock. It makes the battle in the manga have you on the edge of your seat the entire time because the whole time in the manga, we have no idea whether or not Hinata is dead or alive. All we know is that Naruto's pissed off and he's pumping out some huge displays of power that we've not seen yet. And you got Yamato freaking out as the number of tails that are burning into his palm, they're increasing. And you got Yamato desperately running to the village, trying to stop Naruto, knowing he won't get there in time, even when Nagato traps him in the Chibaku Tensei, you never got the feeling that the fight was over. And it's here that Masashi Kishimoto gives some of his absolute best artwork in the entire manga. Having the seal break open and have Naruto's seal ooze out this black goose and have Naruto's eyes in his face just shaded in all while you have the center of the eyes glowing while Yamato is serving as this ticking clock. And we see that humanoid form of the nine tails begin to emerge. At this point, your heart's beating so fast and you're holding your breath you have no idea what's about to happen because at this point you know we've reached a turning point naruto started this fight in utter rage but he was at least keeping a grasp on his emotions but now he's so far gone and before he can fully give in we get the reveal of minato popping up out of nowhere to try and stop naruto after the father and son talk with minato warning naruto that toby was the one pulling the strings behind pain minato rebuilds the seal and the naruto that we see go on to defeat pain has come back full circle to how he started the fight he's still pissed off but he's got that calm and cool head as he finishes his fight with pain with that gorgeous double page spread where naruto's shadow clones are just send him flying into pain in order to finish off the deva path listen a lot of people hate the way that fight looks hot take kind of loved it yes would i love for them to go back and animate that fight in the way that it probably deserved to be animated Absolutely. Is it the culmination of the greatest arc in Naruto's history and therefore probably deserved all the money the animation studio could throw at it? Once again, absolutely. But a part of me just loves the crazy faces and the big blocks just getting thrown. Something about how lazily it's animated to me confers the speed at which they're moving. And in a way, it feels as though it was almost on purpose. Like there's no way your fight gets that goofy without you doing it on purpose. So while well, yes, is that fight arguably animated wrong? Probably. Does it still hold a special place in my heart because of how goofy it looks? Absolutely. But if we're being real, if that fight was animated the way that our number one spot fight was animated, then it would arguably be even better. Because coming in at number one, we have Naruto versus Sasuke part two-ish part final. It's the Valley of the End fight. I mean, of course. What other fight would it be other than the Valley of the End fight? If the Gara fight is accumulation of the Kotoha Crush arc, and the fight against Zabuza is accumulation of the Land of Waves arc, then this fight is the accumulation of the entire show. Naruto has been chasing after Sasuke for 750 episodes. And finally, over 600 episodes after their first fight, Naruto gets to fight Sasuke again. And this fight has everything. It has Sasuke capturing eight and a half of the tailed beast in Jibuka Tensai to superpower himself, making the strongest version of his Susano we've ever seen. It has Sasuke using his strongest ever offensive attack, Indra's arrow, which Naruto was only able to deflect with his ultra big ball Rasen Shuriken Sage of six paths something or another. It has Naruto making shadow clones of his full transformation Kurama mode, shoving them into each other to make a three-headed, nine-armed Kurama that makes a tailed beast Rasen and shuriken on one hand and a sage of six paths ross and shuriken on the other it has karama clones taking electricity arrows through the mouth with offensive output so powerful that it destroys the valley of the end but more than anything and let's be real this is the more iconic part of the fight it has naruto versus sasuke in one of the most gripping hand-to-hand -hand sequences 
in anime ever. Naruto and Sasuke maxing out their taijutsu prowess to battle each other in one of the bloodiest in Ross battle in Naruto. And it has incredibly iconic moments like Sasuke receiving the uppercut from hell. Sasuke getting behind Naruto and hitting him with a Chidori and skipping him across the water. Naruto and Sasuke tumbling and Naruto throwing Sasuke into the rock so hard it creates a crater. And more than anything, it has the final Chidori versus Rasengan. As Naruto and Sasuke both bloodied and battered and out of chakra summon just enough chakra to use one final clash. The force of which is so great that it not only destroys the Valley of the End, but blows off both of their dominant arms. Outside of being the most fast paced and gorgeously animated fight in the entire show by a long stretch, this fight quite obviously meant more than any other fight in Naruto's history. As by stalemating this fight, Naruto was able to convince Sasuke to return to the leaf, that there was no futility in Sasuke trying to kill Naruto, and that Naruto forgave Sasuke for everything that he's done, and that he was welcome back home whenever he wanted to come. This fight also saw Kakashi and Sakura rushing to the scene to fully reunite Team 7, with Sakura stopping the bleeding of both Sasuke and Naruto's arms, saving both of their lives. And as the blood from both of their blown off hands intermingled, it was once again shown that they were always brothers. But more than anything, this fight also signaled the end of the cycle of hatred, the breaking of Indra and Ashura's reincarnations battling until they die. Something that Hashirama and Madara had tried to achieve a hundred years prior, but Madara had destroyed. And thus, this possibly signals the end of the reincarnation cycle of Indra and Ashura, with Naruto and Sasuke being the last reincarnations. And with this war between the two most powerful people on Earth coming to a close, the true era of peace was ushered in, which would forever change the scope of what the Naruto universe was about. With Sasuke returning to Konoha to act as the Shadow Hokage, keeping an eye on the Otsutsuki by traveling between dimensions, and Kakashi stepping up as Hokage during the blank period until Naruto was ready to take over the mantle, 15 years later. With the conclusion of this fight, an entire new generation of Konoha ninjas was in the making. As Naruto and Sasuke ushering in this era of peace would allow those in Konoha to settle down with their significant others, allowing for the births of people like Boruto and Sarada and Inojin and Shikadai, putting a bow on a story. 750 episodes long. See, this fight is supposed to represent the battle between being able to forgive and not being forgiven. Naruto has to quite literally beat Sasuke into a stalemate to break him out of thinking he's an Avenger. He has to allow Sasuke to see that he can live as more than just the Avenger of his clan and his brother, that he can exist as somebody who can receive love. And it's a beautiful conclusion to a beautiful story. And that's it guys, my top five favorite Naruto fights. I'm just now realizing I never stated that these were Naruto's fights, not just Naruto fights. Like fights Naruto was included in. Cody, can you put this clip in the beginning somewhere that it makes sense? Hi, this is Nick from the future. He just finished filming this video and he realized that he's saying Naruto's fights. And that's gonna make you think that it's just fights within the show of Naruto, but I'm talking Naruto's fights. Fights that Naruto is included in. Okay, back to past self. Have fun filming the rest of the video, past self. But now you get it, so I guess that's all that matters. Or was I? Oh yeah, Naruto explained. Thank you so much for coming on today, man. It was an honor having you on the page. And if you guys want to hear more of me and Naruto explained talking best fights in Naruto, go ahead and follow Naruto explained because like we stated earlier, there's going to be Sasuke's top five favorite fights on his page. I'd love to do more collaborations with you in the future, man, as long as you're the one who talks about Sasuke. And that's it, guys. Do you agree with the list that me and Naruto explained created? What fight would you want to see on this list? Tell me in the comments below and why you guys are down there, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Ah, oh, Sasuke's best fights. There's the one he should have lost against Itachi, the one he should have lost against Deidara, the one he did lose against Killer B. The list goes on.